All right, guys, uh, we're going to kick it off today. Today's um, script training is going to be a little bit different. We're going to more talk about some actual sales um, skills, some skit sales training, a little bit more advanced, guys. So I want you guys to have an open mindset. Um, do we got to mute yourself? Yeah, just a quick reminder, since we're streaming it on the TV there at the office, if you're in the office, mute your uh, computer. Um, otherwise, it's going to echo. You're going to hear the TV and then you're going to hear your computer and it's going to start echoing. So uh, yeah, just make sure you guys are hearing me through the TV, through the speaker and the TV. Okay, so today's topic, guys, is going to be um, about persuasion and persuasion in sales uh, it's really a key fundamental and just how to make yourselves better at sales, how to convert more sales, um, how to persuade people to move in the direction that you want them to move to. So I want everyone to take out like a, a notepad and paper because you're definitely going to want to take down some notes, guys, because this is a little higher level and I'm going to be going through some stuff and I'm going to want you to write down things that come to you that you, you see that you can apply to your business um, for you guys to really understand this and grasp this, you got to participate and take some notes because um, it's not something you guys may be used to or you, you may think of when you're thinking of sales. Um, a lot of times we think of sales as just, you know, someone wants to buy, someone wants to sell, we're going to meet them, we're going to do our presentation, we're going to show them why they should work with us. Um, but we're not fully going deep into understanding the different parts of what makes someone choose to move forward or not. What makes someone say, okay, you are the person that I should be working with. There's a lot of different nuances that take place. And there's a lot of psychology that takes place as well, right? People think, you know, people are influenced by, by certain things. Um, who is like a really smart person that you look up to? Uh, put it in the chat. You can go in the chat. Maybe someone you follow. Maybe someone you look uh, to, to for advice. When you think of like the smartest person you know or someone that always gives good advice or maybe it's a, someone who's in the public eye, a celebrity, someone. Elon Musk. All right. That's a good one. Um, uh, Josue, why do you think – why is Elon, Elon Musk – one of the smartest guys. More than anything, I believe he's very aware of what's going on. How do you know he's aware? Uh, let me see. For this to work, whoever's streaming it, who's streaming it on their on the TV? Oh, okay, Jackie, maybe. Um, have Jackie unmute herself and just talk through Jackie's computer. Or just shout it out. You can shout it out. Jackie, un, uh, un unmute and let him shout it out. You guys hear me? Yep. Okay. I just believe Elon Musk is a very aware person and he's always up to date as to what's going on around the world, not just maybe in the US. How do you know that though, for sure? How do I know he's aware? Yeah. I follow him on Twitter, and a lot of the things he's saying is relevant, and he has sources to back his stuff up. He's not just saying it out of out of despite or out of concept. Got it. So he's like right. someone you look at as an authority, kind of in that space. Right. Okay. Right, and he, he's also not just making things up. He also has the sources, and you can like go back into into whatever he's posting and you know it's like what's it like we're excited or why not um there's one reason for that and another reason is how successful he's become from where he has started and he's still moving forward so he's he's not content as where to he's at at the moment so he's still pushing forward got it but you don't know for certain that everything he says is true, right? Because you have you verified everything he said? No, not everything he said. Have you like looked up, researched everything he's talked about, you know, and, and made sure like it's absolutely 100% true? 
No, I have not. Okay, so that's a perfect. So yeah, taking it example. off of authority. You're going off of authority, right? So the mm -hmm. example there is that Elon Musk is out there in the public eye. He's put himself out there so much. He's proven himself. He's the loudest. He's on Twitter. He's making all these moves. Uh, he's controversial in some of the things he does. Therefore, he has created authority in Josue's eyes, right? But Josue doesn't really know, like, to his heart, like, 100% that everything that Elon Musk is accurate or true. He's just assuming it is because Elon Musk is, is an authority figure in, you know, the electronic, um, electric car space and all the different things he's trying to do, right? So the point I'm trying to make, guys, is that that right there is a perfect example of when someone uses authority, uh, different elements to persuade you to believe what he says and to want to buy from him, right? And so many people own Teslas and stuff like that. Um, but part of that is persuasion. Part of that is authority. Part of that is influence on your decision to think he's good or he's bad or you should move forward or you should buy a Tesla or you shouldn't buy a Tesla, right? So at the end of the day, Elon Musk is a salesperson. He's selling products, right? At the end of the day, everything that Elon Musk does, it's so that he can influence your decision to ultimately go buy one of Tesla's products or whatever his next product is. So I want you guys to think about that, right? There's a lot of power in persuasion. So when you understand that, when you understand these fundamentals that it's not just meeting with the client and saying, you should buy with me, you should sell with me. There is persuasion that needs to happen. And there are certain things that you can do to influence the outcome. You guys follow me there? Right? Because remember, like most people don't really verify a lot of things that people say, right? Like if it sounds good, if it looks good, if someone else said it was good, you know, all those different things, people are going to assume that what you say is, is true or it makes sense and this is what I should do, right? The same way that when someone tells you to go watch a movie, right? Like, hey, have you seen that new movie? Like, it's a really good one. You should watch it. It's a dope movie. And then what happens? You end up going and watching that movie because someone else told you that it was a good movie, right? So I want you guys to think of those things as we talk about these, these different concepts. So the first concept that we're gonna talk about is like different steps and different things that you can use in your business to persuade people to move forward with you. So there's principles of persuasion, right? And don't read ahead guys, there's about four or five principles we're gonna go through. One of them is called reciprocity right? Give people what you want to receive. And I want you guys to think of that, right? When you give someone something, a lot of times they're going to feel obligated to do something back, right? Like if you take someone to lunch, for example, and you're like, oh, I'll pay for lunch, right? The next time you guys go to lunch, a lot of times that other person's gonna feel obligated to pay for your lunch because you paid last time, right? Raise your hand if that's true, right? If someone took you to lunch and they paid and then you guys go to lunch again, you may wanna pay, right? Or if they bought you coffee, then you may offer to buy them coffee on the next one, right? That's called the law of reciprocity, right? You do something for someone, they feel obligated to do something back for you, right? So I want you guys to think of that in business, right? and I'm gonna keep toggling back and forth to the screen. I want you guys to take some notes down. Um, in business, right, in what we do, what can you give your client, right? So we're looking at clients, right? We're trying to attract clients or we're also trying to gain referrals, right? Maybe attract business from other people, right? Other people that can refer business. What is something that you can do for a client or a referral source that would make them feel obligated to either work with you or refer you a client or give you something back? So this is now a question that I, I want you guys to think of and I want to, you know, drop some answers in the, in the comments. Dewey, what you got? 
say it on Jackie's screen, guys. Those of you guys, just Jackie. Jackie, you can keep yourself unmuted the whole time and just everyone just shout it out through Jackie. Okay. Um, so what I think uh, a good way to uh, get more clients and get referral is um, to buy them Starbucks. Maybe when you go into your showing, you want to give them like a Starbucks, asking them what, uh, if they want to grab a coffee or, or maybe um, afterward you can give them a gift or something like that, just to uh, for good faith, just to, for working together to strengthen the relationship. There you go. That's a perfect example, right? Is uh, giving yes. someone a gift, right? Or a nice gesture, whether you're buying them coffee, whether you're giving them a gift card, whether you're you know taking them to dinner, whether you're doing something, what you are doing is you are giving first, and then you are influencing how they see you, how they view you. Therefore, the more that you give to someone, they might, they're gonna feel more obligated to wanna work with you because you've been so kind to give them something, right? Someone else- Can I add hand? something? Yeah, what do you yeah. got? Um, I think we sometimes overcomplicate it. And if we simply give them valuable information and plenty of it, they can they can kind of reciprocate it by answering questions and kind of slowly naturally start working with you um, and not make it seem a little too forced by simply having a conversation opening up and giving them that valuable information so yeah that's definitely one right um it, it doesn't have to be a, a tangible or a physical gift you can give someone really good information and not ask for anything in return but in their mind, they start to feel obligated to want to work with you or they start to see you as more valuable. So let's say even with social media content, you're constantly giving advice, giving advice, giving advice, not asking for anything in return. You're just giving, 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 giving good information, good advice. When someone DMs you, you give them great advice. You, you don't push it on them like, hey, you have to do business with me. You more just say, hey, I'm here to help if you ever need anything, then in turn, that's gonna influence them to wanna do business with you or wanna help you in return, if, you know, depending on what the situation is, right? So I want you to think to yourself now, am I giving what I want to receive? And the other thing you gotta think of too is it has to be, valuable to the person that you're giving it to for example if you you know give someone advice on buying or selling real estate but they have no you know intention of ever buying a home or let's say for example if i gave my daughter uh she's nine years old and i gave her some really good advice on the three steps to qualifying for a home loan right it has it's not valuable to her because she doesn't she doesn't need that. She's not going to use it, right? So you also got to understand that you got to give within context, right? It has to be valuable to that person that you're trying to, you know, get business from or do business with, right? So giving valuable information, giving gifts, you know, whether it's Starbucks, whether it's a gift, whether your clients that you work with, maybe after, after they uh, close the deal, you give them some sort of personal gift as a thank you then that's going to earn points with them. And they're going to think of you, you know, later on when they need to do something, right. Or maybe you're sending them gifts throughout the year. Maybe you decide that, Hey, for my clients, you know, every, every three to four months, I send them a Starbucks gift card, just letting them know I'm thinking about them and I'm here to help. So it doesn't even have to be a huge, huge gift, but it has to be related to what you're trying to do. Right. Um, Chris wrote in the chat, um, bring them business and they will bring you business in return. There you go. So let's say if it, it's not a client, but it's a referral source. It's someone that you want to refer business to you, right? Let's say, let's say uh, you meet like a mortgage lender, right? Someone outside of our team and you, you build a relationship with them. You can't just expect them to refer clients to you, right? Now, if you were to refer them a client, they may feel obligated to refer you a client, right? Or maybe it's a related industry. Maybe it's um, a handyman who does work on properties. Maybe it's 
um, I don't know, an insurance person that does insurance for homes. Maybe it's a, an attorney, you know, a contractor, some sort of vendor that is that knows a lot of people. If you refer them business first, they may feel obligated to refer you business back, right? Not the other way around. Sometimes we want to receive first before we actually gave anything. Does that make sense, guys? You guys following me? So I want you guys to start thinking in your mind, am I giving first? And like, who are the people, right? So I want you guys to write ideas as they come because you may think like, oh shoot, you know, there's this guy. Yeah, maybe I should try to find a client for him because I know he'll refer me more clients, right? Start, start writing those, those things that pop into your head, right? As I, as I say them. So that's reciprocity, guys. You give what you expect to receive. The more you give, the more you get, right? And it's something that I've honestly um, built my career off, even with social media. If any of you guys follow my social media, I am constantly giving out free game, right? Raise your hand if, you follow, if you've seen any of my videos on social media. Now, raise your hand if any of them have given you some sort of value in one way or another. Whether it's motivation, whether it's a tip, whether it's whatever, you know, whatever it might be, an inspiration or a, a helpful advice. That is how I have built my presence on social media and my reputation is that I just want to be the person that is always helping, always helping, always giving free game, always giving free information. And in return, it comes back to me, right? Whether it's a referral, whether it's a, uh, an agent that wants to join our team, whether it's uh, an opportunity that the door opens for some other business venture, whatever it might be. But reciprocity is something that I've built my business on. Um, yesterday, I spoke at this event yesterday uh, and there was one of the agents there on Team Fast um, that I follow on social media, he's a cool dude. And um, I was chopping it up with him and, you know, he was asking me some questions and I told him, Hey, look, you're not on my team and I'm not trying to recruit him because he's on Kenny's team and he's within our organization. But I was like, if you ever need coaching, just hit me up. And he was like, well, do you charge for coaching? You know, can I hire? I'm like, I don't charge, bro. Like just hit me up. If you need book a time with me, here's my link. And I'll, I'll, I'll get with you for 20, 30 minutes and I'll coach you on whatever, whatever you need. And so to me, I know that if I just give him value, he's going to remember that. And he's like, dude, that would be awesome, man. I'm, I'm going to take you up on that offer. I'm going to hit you up. We exchange contact info. And after what he said, he's like, you know what? I do more business out here in Oakland, but I don't really have anyone I work with out in San Jose. And sometimes I get clients out there. Maybe I can refer those to you. Right? So what I want you to see is like, I'm just offering. I didn't ask him for anything. He took the liberty to say, hey, man, you're offering. What, let me see how I can help you, right? So that's a perfect example that just happened yesterday of where the reciprocity comes in. All right, any questions on reciprocity before we move on to the next one? All right, feel free to yell it out. If you're in the office, feel free to uh, raise your hand and say it through Jackie's uh, computer there and feel free to drop it in the chat. All right, next concept, guys, that we're going to go into. Consistency is people, we judge people based on their actions, right? And let me give you uh, an example of what this means. If someone does something for you, a lot of times they want to, they, in their mind, they want to be consistent. Everyone wants to be consistent. No one wants to be looked at as a flake, as someone who is, is not reliable and stuff like that. So when someone already does something for you, it's a lot easier to go back and ask them for something else because they've already demonstrated that they are willing to do something for you. And no one wants to kind of go back against like what you think about them. So here's a good example in our business. Like if a client leaves you a five-star review on Zillow. So say you do a great job for your client. They leave you a good review online. It's a lot easier to now go back to that same client who left you a good review and ask them for a referral or ask them to do a video testimonial for you 
since they already gave you a review, people want, always want to be consistent with their actions and with what you think of them, right? So you can play on that in your business, right? You can ask for referrals. When someone already gave you a referral, for example, if you have a client that referred you another client, it's a lot easier to go back to that same client that gave you the first referral and ask for more referrals because they've already shown that they're willing to give you referrals and they want to be consistent with their actions, right? No one wants you to judge them. Um, there was an example where, uh, have you ever seen when people put like those signs in front of their yards, like either for um, like vote for this, you know, congressman or vote for this dude, you know, whatever the local guy, raise your hand if you guys seen that, like in a yard where people put like vote for someone for sheriff or whatever. Okay. And it's usually like a small little sign, right? So there's studies that show that when they go ask someone to put the small sign in, there's a lot of people that say no. And there's a few people that say yes, right? So they put the small sign. And since they already said yes, they will go back to those same people and say, hey, I know you know you support us. You were willing to put the small sign. You're willing to do that. Would you be willing to let us put a bigger sign in front of your house? Or would you be willing to speak publicly and let people know that you, know, you support this, this guy in office? And what happens is the people who already put the sign in front, they're the ones who are more likely to put a bigger sign or to go out and speak publicly and let people know that they're supported. But if they were just to go to someone who never put the small sign in and just say, hey, would you be willing to put a big humongous sign in your yard? Or would you be willing to do a video testimonial? Most of the people say no, right? It's because the people that already are doing what you want them to do, they want to remain consistent with those actions, right? If they already let you put the small sign, it's a lot easier to ask that same person to let you put a big sign in. Does that make sense, guys? Are you guys following me? Where people want to be consistent in their actions. So for example, if I were to uh, ask, let's say I were to ask uh, Herbin, hey, Herbin, can you host call session for me? And he's like, yeah, I'll host call session. Boom, he hosts the call session for me. Then I can go back to Herbin again and say, hey, Herbin, dude, you did a great job hosting call session. Would you host the next team meeting for me? Right. And he'll probably be like, yeah, I'll host the next team meeting because he already did one before. So it's easier to get him to do the next one. Right. But if I were to just go to Herbin and say, hey, Herbin, will you host this big meeting for me? And he's never done any of it. He might be scared and he might say, hey, no, I don't, I don't feel comfortable with that. I'm, you know, I don't, I don't feel comfortable hosting the whole meeting or whatever it might be. Right. So I want you guys to think in your business, right, or in our business, what are certain things that people already do that you can get them to do more of so that they remain consistent in their actions that'll benefit your business who has any ideas following up what do you mean by on the follow-up just making sure that uh you stay in touch with the clients even though they might not be ready today they could be ready tomorrow and just keep following up with them uh keep just be consistent and uh if like we've been saying sending video message keeping in touch just keeping uh our names in their mind, um, this is what I mean. They already picked up once. Okay, so they already picked up once, right? So let's let's peel that apart a little bit. So if you call a client and they were willing to talk to you, right? It's a lot easier to get that client who was willing to talk to you to agree for you to call them back again, right? Versus, someone picks up and they're just rude and they want to hang up on you, right? It's going to be hard for them to say, yeah, let me, you know, go ahead and call me back again. So you're right in where if you call someone, you have a good conversation with them, you start building that relationship. And then you say, Hey, is it okay if I call you back again in a couple months? 
yeah, sure, why not? And then when you call them back again in a couple months, maybe they're not ready, but since they already let you follow up with them, they're gonna let you probably follow up with them again, right? So you need to use that in your favor where the people who are talking to you most, those are the people you wanna to continue to follow up with, right? Because they're, they already showed you a little bit and you can keep going for more and more, right? So there's that saying like, um, if you get an inch from someone, then you can get a mile, but you're gonna get it like one inch at a time, right? And always asking for a little bit more, for a little bit more, for a little bit more. Um, the other big one was what I already said, the testimonials. If you have clients who have given you a good review online, get those clients to do a video testimonial for you next. Because they already were willing to give you an initial testimonial. Now take it to the next level and get some sort of video testimonial from them. Right? Or if, if you had a client who's already, you know, you're in good rapport with and they haven't given you a review, we'll go ask them for a review, a review now. Right? Uh, okay, let's move to the next one, guys. So social proof is the next one. So looking at others on how to behave or what to believe, right? So social proof goes back to like testimonials and stuff like that, right? Is what Josue was saying earlier is that because Elon Musk is like in the eye and all that stuff, and he's already proven that he can make the Tesla and do all those things, people are more likely to want to do business with him because he's already proved to everybody that he can do what he says he can do, right? So it's the same thing with you guys. And this is why reviews and testimonials are super powerful in your business, right? If you want to see how to get more clients, if you want a strategy for how to get more clients, start posting all your reviews or start asking everyone for a review and post those online, post those on social media, um, share those when you meet a client. So a good idea is, um, first of all, you got to get reviews, right? If you haven't gotten any reviews, go out there and get some. Now, that doesn't mean you have to close a bunch of deals to get reviews. You can get a review from someone just because you treated them with great service. Maybe they haven't bought with you yet, but you've been helping them and they haven't closed the deal. But you say, hey, by the way, like let's say Cynthia, she's newer to the business, right? Maybe she's been talking to these clients. She's been giving them good advice. She's been showing them homes, but she hasn't closed the deal yet. She can say, hey, you know what? I hope you guys love my service so far. Um, would you be willing to just give me a, a online review just of how I've serviced you so far, right? Or maybe it's a friend or someone that you've given advice to about buying or selling and they never bought or sold with you, but you gave them great advice, ask them for a review, right? Because this is now proof of, it's not just what I say I can do, these are what other people are saying that I do, right? And this is very powerful. This is why reviews are extremely powerful. This is why people go to Yelp, you know, when they want to look up a business, they see what other people have to say. This is why um, you ask your friends, hey, anybody know a good spot to go eat? You know, because if someone else says something, you want to follow kind of what they're doing, right? That's the social proof there. And then the next step is if you already have reviews for some of you guys that have already closed transactions or have some reviews um, that clients have posted for you is print all those reviews out and put them on like one sheet where you can show a bunch of different re reviews that you have or pull up your Zillow profile where it shows all your reviews. And then the next time you meet with the client or you're gonna do a presentation, you show them like, hey, this is what people have had to say about me. And you go into detail and you read some of the reviews and you show them examples or you, or you put some pictures of your clients on there, you know, with the happy face, with the sold sign, with the review that they've had to say. And that is now social proof, right? So when you meet with these clients, they're like, okay, I know you're telling me what you can do, but you just showed me proof of what you've done for all these other people. It's the same reason why um, so many like weight loss programs or uh, gyms and all that stuff, what do they post? What's one thing you see all the time that weight loss programs or coaches or trainers post? 
Transformations. Transformations like before and after, right? Because if, yeah, before and after, right? Transformations. Because if, if I was a weight loss coach or a trainer or whatever, and I came in here and I said, hey, um, hey, Jomo, I'm going to get you in tip top shape, man. Like, you know, I've helped a lot of clients. I'm going to get you in tip top shape. Like, I want you to sign up for this program. Let's go ahead and make it happen. He may or may not believe me, right? But if I show him pictures of before and afters and I show him testimonials and reviews and I have pages and pages and pages of them, hey, look at this client. Here's his before and after picture. You know, I helped him with the diet and training program. He got ripped. He lost, you know, 20% body fat. You know, now he's competing on stage, whatever it might be. Look at this other person. Look at this other person. Jomo's, that's social proof to Jomo, right? So that's going to influence Jomo's decision on whether he wants to sign up with me or not. So if you want to take your sales game to the next level, you need to make sure you are showing up with proof. And if you don't have proof, you need to leverage the proof of the team on your appointments, right? Because collectively as a team, you know, on Zillow alone, we have over 400 five-star reviews, right? But when you meet with clients, are you spending a lot of time talking about that? That's the question. Sometimes you just say, oh, we have 400 five-star reviews. And then you kind of smooth over to the next page and you don't really spend a lot of time going deep on that. So one thing you can do right now when you're meeting with clients or when you're talking to people is you can spend more time talking about the five-star reviews, going into detail, pointing them out, reading some of them, showing pictures, all those things that are just going to make you a lot more credible and give you a lot more social proof. Does that make sense, guys? Any questions on any of this? Feel free to ask questions. Okay. Let's go to the next one. What was that? I have a, I have a question. Um, and because I was talking to someone once and um, it was a sales thing I did, I did a while ago. And they said to post... It's always good to post the, the good reviews, but what happens? I always had a question. What happened to the bad reviews? Because a lot of persons would be like, oh, you're all that good is there nothing wrong. What about those clients who, who you, you speak to on a daily basis, who is not sold on everything being good because they're practical. They know that everything isn't good. So what do you do with those reviews? Um, you ask questions, you ask for feedback. Hey, what can I do? Okay. If someone doesn't want to give you a five-star review, uh, or if you're not getting five-star reviews or you're not getting testimonials, it's one of two reasons. Either you didn't do a good job, that's one, or you're not asking for it, right? It's one of those two reasons. So sometimes you did a good job, but you're not asking for a review. So they don't, they're not just going to give you a review. Now, if you have a client that you ask for a review and they're reluctant to give you one, well, then you need to ask questions. Hey, um, if they're like, well, I don't know. Well, hey, I... I totally thought, you know, I was doing a great job. If I wasn't, you know, you kind of play the like, whoa, hey, I didn't know I wasn't doing that great of a job. But let me ask you, what would I have to do for you to feel comfortable giving me a five-star review? Okay. Right? And sometimes it could be a small thing. It could be a little small thing that you got to do. Well, if you can do this, then I, you know, for sure, I'll give you a five-star review. And it might be something small. And then you, if you can, you do it and then you come back and, Hey, I was able to do that. Can you give me a five-star review now? Mm. Right. So asking questions is going to create clarity for you. And then you'll know what to do from there. Got it. So what if you can't know, what if it's a request that's way out? How do you like, what's your, what, what's, um, where's that work would you, um, you use? Then you would just say, Hey, uh, I would totally love to do that for you, but you know what, unfortunately, I, I just don't think I can deliver on that promise. And I, I wouldn't want to let you down by, by saying yes. And if I can't do that for you, right? You just be yeah. honest with them. You be and honest transparent. with people, transparent. And, you know, unless they're just crazy or completely <laughs> unreasonable, yeah. which there are some people like that. But the majority of people out there are reasonable. And then what you could say at the end is you can say, is that fair? Right. Yeah, why yeah. do I say, why am I saying, is that fair? Because you, 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 you want to, you, I guess you want to see if the customer literally 
understands what's going on and and if they have reasoning enough to be like okay that's fair you just is that right yeah because raise your hand if you want to be looked at as a fair and reasonable person everyone right everyone wants to be fair and reasonable no one wants to be considered like unreasonable unfair right 99 percent of the people there might be you know those crazy people out there weird ones but 99% of the people out there, they want to be considered fair, reasonable, and stuff like that. So when you ask someone, is that fair? They don't want to seem unfair, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's psychology, right? Remember, this is all about psychology and, and sales and, and persuasion, right? So yeah, yeah, ask questions, put it back on them, see if that's fair. It's, that's a fair request. And then all, go right. From there. all right, good question. All right, guys, a couple more uh rapport the next one is rapport people like people who like them right what can you do to instantly build rapport with someone when interacting meeting showing conversations or what can you do to build rapport with people on social media so rapport is all is all about being likable right being likable with clients and that comes with how do you influence that is your energy your attitude, Josue wrote that compliment the clients. Um, what if you were on a Zoom and when you came on, like you said something really funny or you sang them a song when they first met you, right? Now, if you, if you just, uh, if I just met you, right? And we met for the first time, uh, Jomo, I'm gonna use Jomo again as an example. And I was like, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? And we shook hands. And I was like, dude, that's a dope hat, man. I love that hat, bro. Where'd you get that hat? Right? Like, I haven't seen one like that around, right? Like, I haven't seen that color. You know, I like that team, but I've never seen that specific hat, man. That's That looks tight, man. What would you feel inside, Jomo, if I did that to you? I'm literally writing, I'm literally writing um, it in the chat. It's like finding a common ground to know that, hey, we are interested in the same thing. So that just opens up comfort. Yeah. When you're talking about that, he actually knows what you're talking about and you know what your guys are talking about. So pretty much finding common ground. Ob yeah. um, hobbies, interests, it could be anything. Sports. Sports, but just a compliment, right? A compliment goes a long way because it yeah. makes people feel good, right? Because people aren't complimenting you every single day. Most of the time, no one compliments you all day, right? You know, we all want to be loved and, and liked, you know? So when you can show someone that you appreciate them, that you love them, that you like them, that builds rapport and people want to do people, want to do business with people that they like and have rapport with. My uncle, if any of you guys have met my uncle Jim, he does a lot of work for some of our clients on their properties. He's a talker, man. He's, he's, he knows how to talk to people. That's like, he's, he's a sales guy, right? Every time we would go to a client's house to go walk a property, the first thing he would do is he would give them a compliment. And this is what I picked up from him. He would be like, hey, look at that car in your driveway. That's a sweet car. Like, whose car is that? Right? Like, he would immediately start complimenting them. Um, or like, you got a haircut. Hey, haircut, man. Like, psh, nice haircut. Right? Like, he would immediately compliment them and he would laugh, smile. And that's just part of who he is. If you ever meet him, you'll, you'll probably see him sometime. He'll probably give you a compliment, right? Um, and because of that, people gravitate towards him. People like him, right? He's like a nice guy. He makes you feel good. He brings energy. He knows how to talk. And he's, he's always complimenting people, right? So if you want to build rapport with someone, find things that are common ground, right? If they're, if they're wearing uh, the new Adidas and, you're, and you like Adidas, tell them you got those Adidas, right? If they're wearing the new Jordans, tell them, hey, I got those same Jordans, bro. Like, pound it right here, right? Or if you notice they got a nice sweater on or a shirt, or if you walk into their house and they have a really cool painting, or you love the color of their home outside, compliment them, right? If you're on a Zoom call with them, you know, and you notice something in the background, point it out and compliment them, right? So compliments go a long way in building rapport. The other thing you can do is like, do something that most people won't do. Like, 
kill them with kindness, kill them with energy as well, right? Like if someone's in a bad mood, have you guys ever experienced where someone's in a bad mood, but like you do something funny and then all of a sudden you get them to kind of crack a smile a little bit, right? My daughter, my daughter all the time, right? My daughter has a little attitude sometimes. This morning, you know, she's been a little sick the last couple of days. She had to go to school this morning. You know, she's still not 100%. So she's kind of grumpy in the morning. So we're driving on the way to school. And then a song came on and I just started dancing and I started like singing the song. And then she started smiling, right? She starts laughing. And then her whole mood changed, right? And, and then her attitude kind of changed. So if you do something funny or something, you know, different, you know, you know, something that makes you stand out or, you know, makes them laugh, you build rapport, right? So don't be afraid to unleash your personality. Now, there is a fine line between being annoying and being funny, right? So I'm going to say that again. There's a fine line between being annoying and being funny. So you got to just kind of sprinkle it in, right? If you're if you're cracking jokes the whole entire time and they're not really laughing anymore, like you also got to pay attention, you know, to that. Right. Um, but those are just some tactics to build more rapport and that'll influence people's ability to like you and want to do business with you. Any questions, guys? Read your audience. There you go. Jose, Josue. Got to read the audience, brother. All right. Got a couple more and we're wrapping up. All right, authority. Um, the example we talked about earlier, right? With uh, Josue, with Elon Musk. Authority can be a powerful tool in persuasion. So remember, authority is created by you becoming an expert in something or by you positioning yourself as an expert, right? So whether it's like you've sold a bunch of homes and you now use that as part of your marketing, like, Hey, you know, I, I just want to let you know, my team and I, you know, we've sold X amount of homes. We've helped hundreds of people throughout the Bay area. And we know exactly what it takes to make it happen in this market. Right. You are demonstrating some authority there. Right. Um, the way you speak to people, right? When you say things based off of your experience, based off your knowledge, you create authority as well. If you're like, hey, based off my experience, this is what I recommend you do. You are positioning yourself as an authority, as a consultant, as someone who I should listen to, right? Who's the most powerful person, guys, in the, in the United States? The president? the president, the president, right? The president is the most powerful person in the United States, right? Quote unquote, right? He's the person with the most power, the highest person, right? So the president tells people what to do, correct? President tells people what to do. He gives executive orders. He does things like that. What happens when the president goes to the doctor for his checkup? Who is telling who what to do? The doctor, the doctor loses his power. <laughs> the doctor is telling the president how it's going to go, what he needs to do, what advice he should be taking, and all that stuff. Why? Because the doctor is the authority, right? Because the doctor went to medical school, got the degree, he's renowned, he has his experience, all that stuff. The president is going to sit back and say, yes, doctor, I'll do whatever you say, right? Because I want to listen to you because you're the authority. So that's a perfect example of authority coming into play. So things that you can do in your career to create more authority is, is obviously gain experience, right? By closing sales, by taking courses, by getting certifications, um, you know, by um, partnering with a team like ours, right? That has a lot of sales that you can represent yourself as part of those sales and the authority as well. But you have to be able to demonstrate that. You have to be able to talk about that and articulate that as well. So if you're not telling people how much experience you have or how many sales or how many satisfied clients or what trainings you've taken or certifications, if you're not telling people that or explaining that to them in your, in your sales, then you're not using your authority, right? 
because they don't know, like if they just met you off the side of the street or they just met you online or through Zoom or whatever it might be, they don't instantly know that you are the authority. So you have to position yourself that way by explaining those things and articulating those things. Does that make sense, guys? So that's why it's important to go through our past sales when you're meeting with clients. That's why it's important to show them, not only tell them, but show them. That's why it's important to say, even the way you say the language, right? The way you speak to clients, saying things like, based on my experience, this is what I recommend. This is the advice I would give someone in your position, right? Because it's different to say things like, hey, I think you should do this. But if you were to say, hey, based off my 20 years of experience and the hundreds of clients that I've helped, this is what I recommend you do. You see how different those conversations, how different that is, right? So if I have someone who's in front of me and I'm trying to get them to move forward on the sale or move forward with a decision, the way there's power in words, there's power in how you say it and how you frame it, right? So you need to speak from a stance of authority, from a stance of power, not in an arrogant way, not in a, a rude way, but in a way that demonstrates like, hey, I'm someone that has valuable stuff and, and this is why I recommend that and this is why you should listen to my recommendation. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, let me know, are there, are there any questions on authority or how you can use authority in your, in your sales? Remember, this is not only sales, this is also, all of this stuff, guys, is also in your content. If you're recording content online, speaking in these ways, right? Saying, I recommend, saying based off my experience, showing the proof, showing the testimonials, all of these key concepts, they don't only apply to sales, like when you're dealing with a one-on-one -on -one client, they also apply to how you put yourself out there when you're marketing yourself, when you're doing social media content and stuff like that. The same concepts apply because even with social media, you're selling people as, as they watch your stuff. All right. Uh, Enrique. Yes. For someone who, um, cause would you agree that there's a, there's a thin line too between being, um, between authority and I would say acting like, you know, everything. I don't know. What do you call that? Because, um, what I do know is that professionals who are good in sales, mm -hmm. I've seen them. They come off as I know it all, and they oftentimes don't listen to, to their clients. So what would you call that? Showing authority and, you know, being like so pushy. Correct. I, I know everything. You can trust me. You don't have any. I, I, I have everything under control. Yeah, that's a great question. Um it takes, you have to be in rapport with someone. So remember, like, these are all concepts that you can apply, but they have to be applied at the right time as well. So if I just met you and I immediately started showing my authority and we haven't even like talked or gotten to know each other, or I haven't even understood what you're looking for. And I immediately just start like, you know, flexing based, so to say. Yeah, right? yeah, flexing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's going to come off as like, you know, arrogant, condescending, yeah. um, you know, that's going to go the wrong way. But when I've, when I've talked to you and I've listened and I've evaluated you and I understand, and now I'm making a recommendation based off our conversation, now I have permission to give you advice. So you need to have permission to give someone advice through the listening, the dialogue, the conversation. Got it. That makes sense? Makes sense. And um, I would add, um, being intentional as well, that helps that you're yeah. not all over the place when, when you, whenever you do or say something, it's intentional. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And then remember, this is, this is more advanced sales stuff, guys. So it's, it's knowing that like, you got to listen as part of sales. You got to be good listeners. You got to build rapport. You got to establish credibility and you got to get to that point where the client is now open to receiving what you have to say. Right. So you also have to do all of this with finesse as well. Right. You know, just coming out being like, oh, I'm Mr. Authority. And I barely shook your hand and met you for the first time. And I'm like telling you what to do. That's not going to go well. Right. You got to build up to that. And then you got to strike when the time is right to strike. Right. And always say it in a genuine way. Right. So I, I think 
we, we can say the exact same thing, but we can say it in two different ways. And one of them sounds rude and one of them sounds genuine, right? Because the way you say it, how you pause your tonality, you know, if you like get quiet, hey, look at, I really like to help you. And here's what I recommend, you know, sincerity, right? You know, you, you accomplish the same thing, but you deliver it in a way that they're, they receive it better. All right, guys. Um, so think of that, right? As you're going out there, think of, am I speaking with authority? Am I saying things in a way that position me as the authority? Right. Okay. The last one, guys. Urgency and scarcity. People value what is scarce. How can you create urgency in your offer to someone? How does it work with buyers? How does it work with sellers? Right. Urgency and scarcity. Um, has anybody ever been in the mall and seen like the Louis Vuitton store? Right. And there's always a line outside the Louis Vuitton store or outside those expensive stores. There's always a line. Do you guys know why there's always a line? Anybody know? Anybody want to know why there's always a line? Because um, whatever may be on um, sale is like a one. It's like a different drop. So when it's finished, it's finished. Oftentimes that what I see um, shoppers go for. If it's limited edition, everybody wants to get it before it's finished. Correct. Right. Because they do that on purpose. The reason they only let a certain amount of people in the store to create a line is because when people walk by and they see that there's a line, it creates exclusivity, it creates urgency, and it creates scarcity. Um, Louis Vuitton or some of these bigger uh, companies, they also only make a certain amount of product at the same time. And they only deliver a certain amount to the stores at the same time. And they don't even tell the employees how many they're gonna deliver because if they told the employees, a lot of times the employees would just tell people on the side, oh yeah, don't worry, we're gonna get some more, right? But the employees don't even know how many are coming in, right? So that creates urgency scarcity, right? It's like, hey, I only have one more left and it's in this color and if you want it, like this is it, this is the price and if not, it's, it's not gonna be here in an hour and I don't know when I'm getting more, right? And people are going to act and move forward when they know like there's a deadline or when there's urgency or when there's, you know, scarcity is going to create that urgency for them to move forward. Right. So how do you use that in your business? Right. How do you use that in, in what you're offering? Well, there's many ways you can use that in what you're offering. Right. You can say like, Hey, if you sign up today, I'm going to throw this extra thing in today. Right. When you're meeting with clients, hey, look at I can only I only take on four clients at a time because more than four, um, it's just too much, and I give so much service and value, and I have literally I have three clients I'm working with. I only have room for one more, right? So if you sign up today, like I can put you in in my schedule, um, you know I can fit you in, but after that, you know I'm, I'm meeting with some other people. I may have to put people on hold, right? That's a way that you can create some urgency, right? You can also say like, hey, this property, even they do that with, with listings, right? They put say, uh, offer deadlines on properties to create urgency. All offers are due on Tuesday at noon. If you don't bring it in at noon, we're not going to review any more offers. So what does that create? That creates urgency. So when you're working with sellers and you're doing listings, put in an offer deadline and letting everyone know all offers are due on this day creates urgency. Now, if you're working with the buyer, you need to create the sense of urgency with the buyer that the offer is due at this time, because after this time, there's gonna be 20 offers. They're not gonna be looking at anything else and you're gonna miss out on this opportunity, right? So that's where you create that urgency and that scarcity. Um, exclusivity as well comes into play, right? Where, hey, I know of this off-market property, no one else knows about it or it hasn't hit the public yet. This is very exclusive just for our team. They're letting us bring some people in to see it before it hits the public. But after uh, Thursday, it's going to the public and everyone's going to be on that property, right? But if I show you it today, you can get in before everyone else. That's urgency. That creates scarcity. That gets people to want us. Okay, let's get in. Let's figure out what we got to do to get in, 
right? Um, so I want you guys to start thinking about how do you use that in your sales? How do you create urgency? How do you use those tactics to get people to want to move forward towards you ultimately helping them buy or sell? Uh, questions, any questions on the scarcity and the urgency part? Um, Enrique, I just, just to share something real quick. Um, being intentional with that, just to add, being intentional with that is also powerful because you're going to meet, well, I've met some people doing my customer service, right? And I know that they only like exclusivity. So that's like good for me because I just know that I'm just offering them this one thing. I'll paint the picture and that's what they want. They swallow that up. So you have persons who like a good deal, but then you have some persons and you get, that's all they want. So yeah. if you know that that's all they want, it's powerful because you're intentional with these people. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. And when you guys are talking to people on the phone or you're trying to book appointments and stuff like that, um, you can use that, right? Like, hey, my schedule fills up quick, you know, and you know, I have this time and this time, I could bitch squeeze you in at this time or this time. You know, can you make that work? You know, or hey, um, this property that you're inquiring on, I just spoke to the listing agent, you know, they're expecting a bunch of offers. So we need to get in there to see that today, you know, sooner than later, right? So can you, is there any way you can move your schedule around so we can get you in before all these offers start coming in, right? So those of you guys that are booking showing appointments, that are booking listing appointments, you can use this, right? Um, hey, I have a list of discounted properties and I'm only sending this out to 10 clients, right? After I send it out to 10, I'm not sending it out to anybody else because I want to keep it exclusive, right? Um, but I need a commitment from you. I need to make sure we're working together. I need you to, you know, sign up, you know, our buyer loyalty agreement or sign up to work with us before I can do that, right? So remember, there's ways that you can position certain things in the business that creates a sense of urgency and gets people to act faster and move faster. Right now, here's what I'm going to, I'm going to leave off with guys. Um, I know for a lot of us, you know, this is, this may be a little advanced There's some advanced stuff here. Um, and maybe you're like, Oh, it seems simple or whatever it might be, but just trust me, the people who are the best and understand this stuff, you know, the best salespeople, they understand these things and they use these and they implement these different strategies into their everyday sales tactics and they convert at a higher level. It's the same reason why, like, if you give Tiger Woods a golf club and you give me a golf club, two different results, right? Because Tiger Woods knows all the technique, all the strategy, all the tools, the, he knows the thing inside and out, and he's mastered, you know, the art of golf and the sport, and he knows the wind, if the wind is going this way, I got to hit it that way, like, he knows all those different things, versus me coming in there, I'm just trying to hit the ball and, and get the golf ball to go forward, right? So for you guys as salespeople, some of you guys are, are just trying to hit the ball and get it to go forward. Some of you guys are past that point now where you know what to do, but now you need to step up the sales game and you need to start learning these fundamentals and practice them on a daily basis so that you become the Tiger Woods in your sport, right? And now you won't have to talk to as many people you won't need as many leads because your conversion rate is going to be higher when you talk to someone, right? We don't want to talk to a million people to get one client, right? We want that number to go down and go down and go down to where if I talk to three clients, I'm at least one of those and they're, they're qualified clients, right? Assuming they're qualified, assuming that they're motivated, they want to buy or sell. But if I talk to three qualified people, I should at least be able to convert one or two of those, right? If I get really good, I'm converting all three, right? But just imagine, right? If, if I gave you three qualified appointments, hot, hot clients that want to meet and they want to do a consultation and you only come back with one of them moving forward. But if you take this seriously, now you're getting two of them or three of them to move forward. It's worth your time to invest into mastering your sales skills, right? It's worth your time because now you're going to double or triple your sales. And that's why you'll see some of the, the best people on our team. They use a lot of these tactics. They may not even realize they use a lot of these tactics because they've just done it for so long. 
um, and they may not know how to explain it in the way that we just did today. So what I wanna leave you with is what stuff stood out to you? What stuff, what's the one or two things out of what we talked about that you need to start implementing immediately? So do me a favor right now and then we're done. I want you to go into Slack. I'm gonna put a note. I want you just to reply. Um, give me one second. You're gonna re hit reply and then you're gonna put that, put that in there. What is the one to two things you must implement in your sales strategy from the training today? Yeah, I just posted that in Slack. Click on that post, hit, click on it, hit reply in thread, and then post the one or two things that stood out to you today where you're like, you know what? I'm not doing that. I need to start doing that, right? Teddy, reciprocity and rapport, building my authority and creating more urgency, social proof and urgency. There we go. Reciprocity and urgency, scarcity. Social proof and authority. Build more rapport and reciprocity. Social proof and authority. Yep. I see a lot of social proof. I see a lot of um, reciprocity. Social proof, guys. Start calling all your friends, anybody who you've helped, anybody who you're getting advice to, ask them if they'll leave you a review. You can send them the link to our Google page. They can leave you a review. And then once it's posted there, you can use that and you can market that on your social media, um, all those different things, right? I'll post, I'll post the link where they can leave us a review in our, our Slack. And then you can now take that review and use that to market yourself online. Urgency and rapport. Rapport, guys, rapport is a big one, right? Compliment. You see someone, compliment them. Jason, that's a nice sweater, brother. I like that sweater. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. That's a nice hat. Oh, man. Yeah. How long have you been looking for a house for? <laughs> <laughs> right? You see, right away, right? Like his guards are looking down. <laughs> uh, Hey, you it's missed fun, me, huh? Right? <laughs> hey, you missed me, bro. Hey, it's all good. I'm here. Hey, if, if you make someone smile, you're doing something right, you know? Uh, you know, and then from there, you build off of that, right? All right, guys, good stuff. Hope you guys got some value today. Go out and apply this stuff. If you need anything, reach out to me. And uh, let's get it, guys. Have a great week. Peace. Thank you.